Kui Tian and this is Jerome. Um, we are <laughs> so we'll be doing a, a talk about data visualization using Plotly in React. Our project objective is to actually create a visualization tool which uh, shows the programming language proficiencies of users and this will make it easier for people to reach out to each other in, uh, in the company and for the company to track what the proficiencies are of their users. It's actually quite similar to the ThoughtWorks radar. So if you would like to check it out, you can actually um, go and find out more about the ThoughtWorks radar. So why data visualization? I think data visualization, not just in development, is actually around us all the time. Uh, it is uh, very useful as a uh, information amplifier and it makes it easier for people to connect to each other as well as uh, for difficult to understand information to be presented in a way that it's easier to understand at a glance. So that's why I like it. Um, the minimizing human interaction part is <laughs> written by this guy, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so what are the tools that we uh, actually considered in our project? Um, this was actually for a three weeks project. So the first two that we considered was D3. It's actually not a charting library. It, it allows you to make low level manipulations. So manipulate the SVG and HTML. And it's very flexible and customizable. But the drawback is that there's a high learning curve as well as the fact that uh, it will involve more lines of code. Um, that's why we considered instead charting libraries. So some of the charting libraries that we considered were, for instance, HiCharts. So HiCharts is a pretty popular library, um, but it is not, cust uh, it is not um, free for commercial use, and it is also quite heavy. And then uh, that's why we didn't use that. The other one that we considered but didn't use is called Victory. So Victory is pretty lightweight, but unfortunately it was not customizable enough for our use case. It also has a smaller user base. So in the end, we settled on Plotly. So why Plotly? So we chose Plotly because it is highly customizable. It, in fact, it has the largest amount of charts uh, in, the, in terms of charting uh, charts available. It's actually a wrapper over uh, D3, and it also allows you to use React. Uh, so you can just import it into React and then use it. So for us, because we are using React for our front end, that is actually very uh, positive. The other thing is that unlike uh, HiCharts, it is open source and uh, actually has a large user base. So eventually we settled on this because the, of the fact that other ta tasks was necessary, we actually had to do the backend as well as deployment as well as authentication. Yeah, so what are the things that are possible with uh, Plotly? Uh, not only can it do some of the very simple charts that you are familiar with, it can also do animations, it can also do maps and heat maps. So I wouldn't go through all the examples, but uh, because like it has a lot of examples. So um, I will hand you over to Jerome, who will go through the coding code example as well as the explanation. All right, just uh, give me a bit of time. Um, let's get this on. All right then, let's begin. Um, okay, so um, for those who, of you who are familiar with React, you'll know that the basic idea of React is that of components, components which are reusable. So um, as an analogy, you could think of it as being something like Lego bricks. So you make the brick and then at any point in time in the future, when you need to use it, you can just bring it out again and imp um, implement it into your application. So um, the basic idea of Plotly is that you import this, um, this component called Plot from Plotly.js and then by feeding it different attributes, you can then um, basically create the plot. Okay, let's start with the circles. 
Okay, here's the corresponding code for circles. As you can see, there are, what it does is to draw concentric circles of various radiuses. In this case, 1.9, 3.35, 4.8, and 6.2. Okay, so what these represent are the different proficiency levels. So in, from the inside being the most, um, from the beginner, whereas the outside being the advanced. So let's add some labels to them. Okay, as you can see here, these are the labels, familiar, beginner, intermediate, and advanced, which is on the right hand side. Okay, for our project, what the data used was actually um, self-declared proficiencies. For, so the criteria we set was for familiar, the user had to have heard of the technology before and perhaps written a few lines of code, while advanced would mean that the user had been a leader of a team which had used this technology in a project. Next, we have dividers. Dividers refers to uh, the different sectors of the circle. So, for example, in this case, we have eight different categories, in this case, eight different languages. And that's why it divides itself into eight different sectors. So why don't we add some categories to it as well? Yeah. Um, Right. So here we can see that the <coughs> categories are here and it's being fed to it through an array. The good thing about using an array in this case is that the display is actually dynamic. So in the future, if let's say that there were nine or 10 categories or perhaps less, it, the chart itself would adjust itself to fit the, that criteria. Lastly, we have the markers which represent the people. So as you can see here, based on the self-declared proficiencies, each user is assigned a spot in each of the eight different, um, eight different languages. Okay. Um, so the usage case of this is, as Hui Tian has gone through, let's say a user is, is assigned a project. It's assigned a project wh where they need to use, for example, R but they are only of a, a familiar proficiency. So what they could do is, for example, zoom in onto the advanced section, and there they can find, for example, in this case, Aline Marin. So it makes it easier for them to find help when they need it. This is on an individual basis. On a company-wide basis, what this means is that if the company decides to foray into a new language, let's say, Scala, and they find that perhaps the number of people who are proficient in the language is too few. This helps them plan courses which can then raise the overall proficiency of the company in that language. As I said before, the chart is actually dynamic. So what this means is that, let's say we have one, one category or two languages or three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, as the number of languages which the company perhaps wants to increase their stack in, we can just add, add this to their data and the chart will actually adjust accordingly. Um, why don't I wrap this presentation up by discussing the different uh, difficulties that we had in this project. Uh, okay. Here, okay, here. Firstly, a lot of customization was required. This is because um, the chart is actually a very unique use case. So as an example, let me show you the closest approximation that, they, that was available online at that time. So we'll give it a bit of time and you will see, okay. This was what was available at the start of the project. So you can see that it kind of looks like what we need, but uh, it still needs a lot of work. Secondly was incomplete documentation. So let me show you the Plotly.js documentation. Okay. As you can see, there are many sections where the only information provided through the, through the documentation was basically just the name of the attribute. So that wasn't very much help at all, especially when 
we wanted to make a very, as I said, customized use case, a very unique use case. So the way we solved this was actually to look at the Python, the Python um, documentation instead, because Plotly actually has a Python branch. Both, all of them are open source, but the Python branch is more developed at that time. And since it uses the same vocabulary, we could sort of infer and by trial and error, figure out the attributes as well as the values we needed to give to those attributes. The third difficulty was the initial difficulty initial problem in the build step with other module installs. As you saw by the examples just now, um, let me just go back here, it is capable of a lot. Plotly, just using the same plot, you can actually create all of these just by feeding it different attributes and different types of data. But the problem with it is that um, because of this flexibility, what it means is the back end is, the memory load on it is actually quite high. So for some of the users in the group, they had some dip Difficulty building the, I mean, even building the app in the first place. So we solved that by allocating more memory to the build step. Um, why, you may ask, why don't we use smaller modules, like smaller bundles of the, of the Plotly JS? So the reason for this is, once again, because of our unique use case. So for users such as uh, histograms or graphs or bar charts, yeah, sure, you could use all of those, but because our use case was so unique, we had to use the full, the full package, and well, it led to those um, problems with the memory. Lastly, it's the, time, the challenge was time frame, and like Hui Tian said before, it's because of this that we chose Plotly, because it was the closest that we, it came to our needs. So based on, based on our starting point, we could, by modifying quite a lot of factors, and through the documentation, we reached the endpoint that we wanted. So, um, well, some good news is that the number of Plotly JavaScript users is actually growing by a lot. So you can see that even though Python, MATLAB, and R, they started like way before the introduction of, Plot, of the JavaScript branch of it, um, JavaScript is actually overtaking it by quite a lot. So based on this, it's possible that um, there will be better documentation in the future for this, for this um, library. Okay, okay um, if any of you would want to use this, use this template in the future, you can actually just um, scan the QR code for, the, for this GitHub presentation. Then if any of you want to perhaps play with the, play with the demo app, you can just scan this one, right? Or, I mean, if your phone doesn't support the QR code, you can just take down the, <laughs> take down the, the addresses. All right, that brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you very much.